everybody, Brian Boyle here, and welcome to episode 36 of The Mesh Tongue. And uh, today's Super Bowl Sunday, so I'm uh, representing the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, and uh, you can say it, you can say it. They, uh, they've stank for the last how many years, but uh, that's my team, so uh, I can wear this shirt because there can't be too many haters out there. I've never really accomplished many things uh, as far as the team goes, so... Hopefully, uh, hopefully one of your teams is in the Super Bowl, and if not, uh, hey, there's always next year, and that's the beautiful thing about uh, about sports is that there's always a next year, and I try and tell my kids that that uh, hey, there's next year, um, but don't take these for granted. But today, what I want to talk to you about is the concept of fitness snacking. Now, if uh, if you're already a uh, you know say a sub six minute miler and you're going out there and that's your race pace, you can probably tune this off. This is maybe a little bit below you, uh, maybe not. It, it still could have some value, uh, but chances are you're burning so many calories that uh, that you probably can't consume enough. Uh, if you're like me, that uh, you know when I start heading into heavy training, I can't consume seemingly enough calories uh, and I lose weight uh, until I hit that magic number. Uh, at which point I start at least maintaining. But for those people that are maybe using running as a way to get into shape, uh, you're not necessarily concerned about your times. Yeah, you're going against the clock and you're really kind of interested in how fast are you getting, but you're not necessarily going out to win races. Maybe you're just using it for your health. Um, maybe you're not even running races, you're just out running. I think the term fitness snacking, and I don't know who coined this term, uh, and if you do, please comment below that uh, I love to quote sources. Uh, I'd love to quote the source. I tried to do a quick uh, internet search and I couldn't hear, uh, or I couldn't find uh, who had said this first, but uh, I heard it somewhere a few weeks ago and I, and I love it. I, I think this is great, uh, you know, especially to remember, you know, kind of a clue or trigger word to keep you focused. Um, I've told people about this sort of concept, but I really think fitness snacking is, uh, is great. Uh, and this doesn't mean like, oh, you're gonna eat this pouch or this pouch or what you're gonna eat. It actually actually means when we think of a snack, it's a little bit of something. It's not a full meal, but it's a little bit. And so this term was called fitness snacking, that you're going to get your fitness in, in little bits or little bites, okay, versus say a full half hour or hour or two hours or whatever. So the person that uses time as a barrier that says, hey, you know what? I only have 15 minutes. Perfect. That's a snack. Okay. Maybe you have two segments of 15 minutes. Perfect. Okay, today during the Super Bowl, guess how long the halftime is? 20 minutes. What could you do, even if you've already run this morning, and say maybe you're a uh, you know, 10 minute miler, okay, uh, or a 12 minute miler, or even an eight minute miler, okay, and you've got to run in this morning, maybe you got three to five miles in this morning, maybe longer, okay, but we think about, about cardiovascular activity. The cardiovascular activity doesn't increase your metabolism that long. It increases it for an hour or two, this is variable, and I understand this depends on your body type. Uh, it depends on uh, how fast your metabolism is already. But somebody that maybe have met has metabolic syndrome where their metabolism has been so slowed, uh, and maybe you're that 14 to 16 minute miler that's doing a lot of walking and jogging to, to get yourself going. The key with this fitness snacking is that you then take another time out of the day and you get a little fitness snack. So maybe it's spending time doing a routine, a workout resistance routine during the halftime of the Super Bowl today. Perfect time, okay? You know, you've already consumed a little few calories. Uh, you may be feeling a little bit sluggish. That might be the time to get out and get out after it. Uh, maybe it's even just going for another walk, whatever it may be. But the goal is to increase your metabolism that way you have you know, this burning uh, that may not occur just with cardiovascular alone. So we know that resistance is going to burn more calories. Uh, it's going to keep the body burning faster and longer uh, in the sense that what you're looking to do is the, the muscles are always looking for fuel and that can extend you know, depending on how heavy the resistance and how hard the workout. It can extend four, five, six, seven hours after a workout, sometimes as, as many as 24 hours uh, post-workout, depending on how, uh, how things are going. And, and there's, there's some, some resources out there, so if you're really interested, uh, just reach out. You can reach out to me at brian at company, the number 5k.com. I'll be happy to send you those resources. But the, uh, the, the concept is exactly what I said. It's the fitness snack. How can you fit the additional you know, fitness in. Uh, I really like this for resistance with runners. Don't necessarily go in just getting junk miles. Don't go out and be like, oh, hey, you know, I only got 
six miles this morning. I'll go for another two or three this afternoon just to hit my magic number for the week. Uh, don't go doing that. But think about, you know, can I do uh, burpees and say um, um, you know, mountain climbers? Uh, could I do some kettlebell swings? Could I do squats, lunges, you know, whatever it may be that, again, it's going to increase your metabolism. You're going to get some resistance with that. And I love it. It's fitness snacking. So how do you get your fitness snacking in? Have you ever heard this term? Like I said, if you know who coined this, please write in the comments below. I'd appreciate it. Uh, otherwise, how, uh, how are you doing with, uh, with getting your uh, daily activity in and resistance? Is there something that you've got a tip or trick that others could learn from? This is Brian Boyle. This is episode 36 of The Mesh Tongue. Check out runpainless.com. Always uh, please keep the questions, comments, and uh, uh, the love coming here. Share this with your friends, family, and training partners. And whatever you do, don't go hurting yourself to come back. I appreciate it. Thanks.